Thanks, Chick. Mighty glad to have you with us, Mr. Moody. Quite a surprise. Oh, thanks. Glad to be here. Never hit Robbins before. Tom! Hi there. Hello, cousin. Howdy, Dan. Shake, boy. Now, cousin. Good to see you, Tom. Good to see you, boy. Where you been? Oh, Judy and I have been out in the sticks looking for bucking horses. You know, I'm getting a little bit too old to be making jokes with them Bramer bulls. So I'm going to get me some good horses and settle down the stock contract. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, Dad, he still thinks you'll find one as good as midnight. Just half as good as midnight. I'd settle for it. Hey, fella, tell us about Mexico. You're looking awful good. Yeah. Huh? See you later, Tom. Better close that door, baby. It's getting cold in here. Gee, Tom, I missed you. I missed you, too. Did you get that junk I sent you from Mexico City? Junk? That was the most beautiful bracelet I ever saw. I wrote your letter. I never got it. Maybe you move around too fast. Yeah, maybe. I found out one thing, though. If I ever decide to marry you, well, that's where we'll spend our honeymoon. Mexico City. You're wrong. If I ever decide to marry you, we'll spend our honeymoon in Paris. That's what I said. Paris. <laughs> You working today? Only saddle bronc. Isn't that rushing it just a little? Oh, I taped it good. Well, just the same, Tom. You know what they say, no fighter like a hungry fighter. That goes double for me right now. I'm broke. And with all the money you've made, what you need is a manager. You know, I'm just about ready to agree. <laughs> hey, Judy. Don't be too long, baby. I want you to see me win this dough. No, I'll be there. Who's the charm boy? Bart Eaton. He's very nice. Well, he's got a mighty pretty figure. Can he cook? Tom. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Russell Trent welcoming you to the Robbins Wild Horse Show, the biggest little rodeo in New Mexico. Number one on the program, saddle bronc riding. First out will be Wild Willie Burgess from Home Springs, California, on a horse called Murder. Hey! Hey! I'm glad I'm a clown. You're a clown and you're late. Oh. oh. Good luck, Tom. Ride him, cowboy. I will. Ladies and gentlemen, that good-looking fellow in front of the Bronx shoot is Dan Breen. Who, me? The rodeo's famous clown. Come here, Dan. Dan told us last night that he just happened to be passing by. But we found out this morning that he went over 300 miles out of his way just to be here. Well, I guess the rodeo just sort of gets in the blood, doesn't it, Dan? It sure does, cousin. Well, say hello to the folks, Dan. Well, I'd rather say hello to these good looking guys. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Say hello to the folks. Thank you, Dan Green. Next out is Bart Eaton from Rochester, New York, on Bug Juice. He's a new man to the rodeo circuit. But he won most of the money last week at Siegelville. Are you ready, boys? Ow. All right, let me have it. Here he goes. I've been watching that kid for the past few weeks on these little shows, and I used to snicker at him for practicing so much. But I don't snicker now. Uh-uh, no more. a boy, Bart. Nice ride. Nice horse packing, son. Uh, nothing to it. Dan wasn't much of a horse. Funny, I thought he looked pretty good. You know, if you'd moved your boots more, you'd have marked better. Well, now, partner, that sure mighty nice of you all to help little old me out with fine points that way. If I have any trouble at all with these old Bronx, I'll just come a-running for your advice. Next out on Straight Up, we have a real surprise for you. An added entry. Last year's world champion saddle bronc rider, 
Tom Moody of Odessa, Texas. This is Tom's first ride since he broke his ankle. But his rock fell on him in Tucson. But broken ankle or not, you'll see form and talent that make him one of the great riders of all time. <laughs> fresh popping off like I did. Forget it. See, I don't know who you were. Oh, I heard about you, all right. I mean, I didn't recognize you. For the last couple of years, all I've thought about is someday being as good as you are. Next down is Red Tobias from Austin on medium rare. <laughs> You won't think I'm a pest that once in a while I ask you a couple of questions. Sure, anytime. But you got a lot to go with. You're pretty good even before you start asking questions. And now the last buggy horse in the shoe. After this prize, the points we total to determine the higher score of the day and the percentage of the purses each rider will get. So that's Tom Moody, huh? Tom Moody, nicest fella you ever want to meet. Yeah, I'll buy that. Me shooting my mouth off the way I did. You think he'd get sore, but he didn't. You watch that boy. A lot he can teach you. Watch the way he moves his boots when he's scratching a bronc. You know, I've seen him sit backward in a rocking chair hour after hour, working his legs up and down in perfect rhythm. Not so he could do it unconsciously. You know, no real champ has to think about what he's doing. Yeah. Watch how he grabs hold of that saddle horn when he's roping a dog. And he don't take no chances. He ain't a shawl. He's just out after that money. You watch him. Yeah, I sure will. Kind of fools you, though, doesn't he? What do you mean, fools you? Easy going, quiet, pleasant. What do you expect? Well, I'm not sure what I expected. Except all those stories I heard about him being so rugged. Yeah, that way he fools you, all right. Really tough, huh? I tell you about some of the joints I've seen him clean out, you wouldn't believe me. He used to go looking for fights. No more. Now the fight's got to come to him. And then, ooh. He's got a lot to learn, but he catches on fast. All he needs is experience. A couple of seasons of big-time competition, and he'll be right up there. You really think so? Mm-hmm. You've been dating him? Well, not what you really call dates, a movie once in a while. Nice dark movie? I call that a real date. You'll change your mind when you get to know him better. All he thinks about is rodeos. He eats, sleeps, and dreams them. Good. Rodeo, and I can compete with him. But in a dark corner. You do all right yourself in a dark corner, Mr. Moody. Well, thank you, ma'am. That's right neighborly of you. You shut up. You had your supper. Eats like a horse. Oh, that one sounded like that. I'm so hungry, my stomach thinks my throat's cut. See what I mean? My stomach thinks my throat's cut. How corny can you get? I remember when remarks like that used to get us a little bread in the house. You mind your manners, young lady. All right, let's get some 
action around this joint. Well, well, here comes the circus. Batten down the hat. Come here, cousin. Damn. How you feel? Judy, Tom. How are you, Joe? You ain't a day older, Dad. Twice as old and twice as hungry. He was born hungry. <laughs> Joe, I want you to meet Bart Eaton. Hello, Bart. Hi, Joe. Throw a pair of horns on a T-bone steak and I'll bulldog it for you. Oh, no. You know what he's going to do next. Folks, I have here in my hand a bottle, a bottle of, of Dr. 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 Brains' Brains Level Up and Dixie, Dixie Downdraft, Aromatic, Acrobatic, acrobatic, acrobatic Anti Backlash, Elixir Light. Clean, maintain, and guarantees. Take half the contents of that bottle in the morning when you look over the northern part of that southern anatomy. You'll be saying, Heaven bless dear old Dr. Bream. And his darling little daughter. <laughs> She's pretty good, huh? She ought to be. She's been practicing since she was four years old. All right, bring on those wild and woolly bull riders. Are you ready, Daniel? About as ready as I'm ever going to be. There you are, folks. That's why the boys love old Daniel Green. Thank you, cousins. Thank you. Then I wanted to be a ball player. I played pretty good ball around home, I thought. Found out differently when I went semi-pro. After that, I was a flagpole sitter. I didn't know people sat on flagpoles anymore. I sat on the flagpole for a used car dealer in Los Angeles. Nine days. You're a jack of all trades. No more. Brody owns my trade now. You mean that you got a crush on something else? Uh-uh. This is it for sure. I know. How do you know? Last year in Los Angeles, the Coliseum, I saw you. All-around champion. Only for that one day, though. And that was enough. You riding up at that judge's stand, getting that silver saddle. That crowd. Biggest crowd I ever saw. All of them howling their heads off for you. And right there and then I knew what I wanted to be for sure. Well, there's more to this business than riding up to a judge's stand and getting a silver saddle. Or haven't you found that out? I found out. But hard work doesn't scare me. Not now. Now that I know where I want to go. You know something that's... It's kind of nice to know where you want to go. And I want to go right to the top. Well... I wouldn't bet against it. You really think so, Tom? You're good, boy. And you'll get better. If you let me hang around you long enough, I will. Well, there isn't a day goes by that I don't learn something from you. <laughs> Even how not to do it? Well, that I don't learn from you. Hey, Tom, what's this I hear about you entering the bulldog? That's right. Right, and Bronx wrestling steer is two different things. I need the point. You may end up needing some new plumbing, too. Well, he's fine, Dan. That ankle's not going to bother him. I'll keep his steer lined up for him. Here, see if the shoots. OK. He keep your steer. Ain't you picking up pumpkins a little green this year? He hazing for you? Yeah, I'm going to haze for him. This when? This right now? No use asking who's either this is in who got the best of the deal. Nobody's getting the best of the deal. In all the years I was on a medicine show, I used to dream about audiences like you. Only they were harder to sell in those days. I think it's wonderful, Tom. Nobody ever lost anything by giving the other fellow a little the best of it. Look, this isn't charity. He can help me, too. This boy's real good. Come on. Stay behind his head and keep him running straight. You'll do all right. Relax. I'm okay, Tom. Honest. Okay. Next out from Odessa, Texas, one of the high point men of last year, Tom Moody. The steer gets a 20-foot start. If the rider leaves before the steer crosses the 20-foot line, 
He is penalized 10 seconds. You ready, Tom? Any time. Well, job, Fox. Thanks, Tom. You know, I think I'm beginning to get the hang of things. Yeah, you sure are, boy. Hey, Tom, what do you think you'd call a, a good year? In dollars, I mean. Oh, 15, 20,000. Some of the boys do better than that. I mean, the really tops, though. Well, if one of us gets all the breaks all season, I mean all the breaks, it might come close to 30,000. You got your sights set kind of high, haven't you? Well, maybe not too high. Maybe not. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking on behalf of the Phoenix Junior Chamber of Commerce, we welcome you to the Phoenix World Championship Rodeo. Now working in the infield, some wonderful free rodeo entertainment, Roman riding by the Valkyrie. Thrilling act this year, an automobile jump by Pauline Picker. Oh no. Only a clown would do a thing like that. How about it, Doc? When did you ride him last? A couple of days ago in Yuma. Bad news? Well, I think it's the carpal bone but I won't be able to tell definitely until we see the plates. Oh, he'll be all right. Just stay off him a while, that's all. Don't worry, I will. It's too bad, Doby. If I can't borrow a horse, I'll have to draw out of the roper. Yeah, it's tough, Doby. Thanks, Bart. Sorry. Those two killed me. Tom Moody's gal and Tom Moody's little pal. Too bad, Doby. And sorry, Doby. For what? That he won't be able to beat her boyfriend at the cap roping? There may be Please, some people who feel sorry for Doby. But they ain't one of them. You're in the big leagues now. You're going to be running into a lot of petty jealousies. Don't let them get you. Thanks, Judy. I'll try to remember that. Hey, Bart. See you later. You cloud up easy, don't you? Oh, he was a fresh guy, Tom. He had it coming. Don't go looking for trouble. You'll live longer. I want you to meet some of the boys. Fellas, this is Bart Eaton. Casey Hi, Tibbs. Bart. Hi, Casey. Pete Crump. Ben Lewis, Bart. Boom Poor. Boom. Jerry Bart. Ambler. Bart. Jerry. Bill Williams. Bill. I want you like to meet the competition. Some competition, too. I sure heard a lot about you fellas. Oh, we've heard considerable about you, too. Is it true you're going to run us out of the rodeo business? We hear one of you is, but which one of you is a protege? <coughs> What's those big words, Boone? Oh, haven't you heard? He started reading. <laughs> well, don't make it too tough on us. All I want to do is make enough money to buy a couple of hot dogs. Yeah, solid gold hot dogs, huh, kids? We don't care how much money you win, cowboy, just so you come up to our poker game. <laughs> we'll see you later, Bob. Yeah. Good luck, kid. Thanks, Casey. Glad I met you. Anything I can do to help you, let me know. He's the best. You mean second best? Thomas, Thomas, come in here. What do you want to act so bureau headed about? How come you get so fractious every time we get to a big show like this? Look, Tom. <laughs> Settle down, Tom. Tom, look. This is your Madison Square Garden hand. Well, don't just sit there and do something. Well, I'm holding down my hand, need I? Well, hold this for a while. You know, this afternoon, when I get you in that barrel, I'm going to point you at the biggest bramer in the whole arena. Oh, Dan, you can't be that mad. 
Well? Oh, Dad, look at your face. You're late again. I don't need that clown makeup to run from them bramers. Seeing you without makeup, they'll probably run from you. I hope you got something there, honey. Come on, cousin. Let's catch a parade. And let's, you do the driving. Let's go, baby. Go on, honey. I hear you're looking for a horse. I sure am, man. We'll try old Whitey here. Ain't you entered in her open? Yeah, I would have got myself put back in the second section. Thanks, Boone. Ride him like you owned him. Our first contest event of the afternoon will be cowboy team time. In this event, the cowboys work as a team, one roping the head, the other roping the heel. The head roper dismounts, ties both hind legs with a steer below the hops. An event like this carries a purse of $1,700. No time for the first team. Thought I was going to have to get me a new partner. <laughs> Good old Boone. Well, you've done him a couple favors. The next team, Williams and Carson. <laughs> Missed him. No time. That's a surprise. That just goes to show you never can tell. Next team, number nine and number 22. Tom Moody, world champion saddle bronc rider of Odessa, Texas, and Bart Eaton of Rochester, New York. Good luck. Thanks, Judy. This is a new team, ladies and gentlemen. Bart Eaton is a newcomer showing a lot of promise. What's that? Outside. <laughs> picks up the heels in fast time. This cowboy, Bart Eaton, really does show a lot of promise. You know, maybe he is going to give us some trouble. Nice going, Bart. Thanks, Tom. I hope this is just the beginning. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, frame a bull rider. One of the most dangerous of all contest events. Our clown and bullfighter, Dan Breen, is out there for the protection of the cowboys and laughs for you. Where'd he go? I don't know, but he nearly took me with him. Boy, I'm really getting too old to play with these bulls. Well, boy, don't try to get in here. There's just room enough for me. I'll give them. Hey. Here he is. We have another bullfighter helping Dan Breen. Cousin Hugo, the chimp, is hanging on the other dump. Coming out of shoot number five, our next contestant riding bull number 66, who is yet to be qualified on. He is a real bad spinner. talking about, Tom? I'm not riding Bramus. Yes, you are. You're at it in every event. A little present for me to you. Gee, thanks, Tom. Your bull's the number one. I already got my rope on him for you. Get after him. Shoot 
number six, the outstanding individual cowboy of the Phoenix Rodeo, Bart Eaton. This crowd pleaser has stolen the show from many of our seasoned veterans. He sure plays it to the hilt, don't he? Yeah, but he's good. There's no telling just how far this boy can go, and we wish him well. Nice ride, Bart. It'll be hard to beat. Thanks, Tom. It'll be a tough hand, that kid. Yeah, that's what he's been to tell him. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Bream, Mr. Poor, Mr. Carson, and Mr. Moody. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the Junior Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank all the people who helped to make the rodeo a success. And especially, I want to thank all the contestants. I hope they all come back next year. <laughs> Good. That was Mr. Don Epperson, ladies and gentlemen, president of the Junior Chamber of Commerce, which has done a rousing job for the rodeo. Well, that uh, sort of wraps it up from here. We'll take you back to the studio for an interesting commercial. Oh, hold it. Hold it just a minute. I uh, see a young man that I think I can persuade to come over. <laughs> take it over there, will you, Nick? Oh, Bart Eaton. Bart Eaton. Uh, here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't think that the TV camera would phase him, not after what he's been through in the past three days. <laughs> come right over here. <laughs> Well, uh, hello, Mr. Eaton. Bart. <laughs> hello, Bart. This is Bart Eaton, ladies and gentlemen. Get a load of that out with Eddie Wilson. Well, Bart, I uh, guess you're sorry to see this end. Well, there's always another. Pendleton's next. <laughs> well, let's hope that you do as well at Pendleton as you did here. Uh, you took uh, third place money, didn't you? Uh, it was several hundred dollars, wasn't it? Uh, 950. <laughs> well, that's a lot of money for four days' work. Well, you see, uh, what's more important is points. For every dollar you win, you receive a point in the official standings. And the one with the most points at the end of the year is champion. <laughs> you, uh, you think that you'll win the championship? Oh, I'll win the championship, but probably not this year. I started too late. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think that a uh, rookie has ever won the championship, has he? <laughs> well, it, uh, it would be remarkable, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very remarkable young man. <laughs> well, Bart, I'd, uh, I'd love to talk to you for hours more, but... Uh, you know, like sometimes I don't think that guy's action. kidding. Well, I'll, yeah, uh, uh, maybe we should have stood in bed. To see you at Pendleton and uh, have luck there. <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you've enjoyed getting a flash of this remarkable young man. <laughs> uh, no doubt we'll be hearing uh, plenty about him in the future. Well, uh, this is... Uh, Fred Wharton saying so long from this end. Oh, brother. Don't get up, fellas. Why didn't you tell us you was dressing? We'd have wore our Levi. Oh, you look fine. You look fine. Care to dance, Judy? Oh, do you Roomba? Don't bet he can't. You're kidding, of course. Is this actually his first big competition? That's right, cousin. He's awfully good. Check. He ought to be as good as he thinks he is. Well, he comes pretty close, don't be at that. You know, all that boy needs is a little confidence. I was. Happy too, aren't you? I got the world by the tail with a downhill pull. For how long? Huh? I said, for how long? What kind of talk is that? What do you got in the back of your mind? You. Do you mind? 
Oh, I don't mind. You just go on thinking about me all you want. I'm a man that craves a lot of thinking about. Pardon me for being coy, but I'd like to be thought of too once in a while. I think about you. I love you, ma'am. Not enough to marry me. What are you talking about? We're gonna get married. When? Look, I love you, you love me, we're gonna get married. Period. Man? No. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Period. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pendleton, Oregon, and the 39th Annual Epic Drama of the West, The Pendleton Rounder. To start our program this afternoon, we have some wonderful entertainment. The Pendleton Rodeo Committee have brought in the very colorful Indian ceremonial dancers, the Ogallala Sioux of Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Waiting in the arena at this time is the grand entry and going into the serpentine ride. Look, it isn't a bribe, it's a tip. You just ease on over to the chutes. I'll be over in a little while. Snap me there. Okay, Mr. Eaton. One dog, eh? Everything on it. I was wrong, boys. It's not a Christmas tree, it's old bar. Yeah, I've never seen anything so full of pencil. <laughs> <laughs> when do you light up, boy? Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, and uh, which one of you is going to be second today? You don't mind if we try to win some of the day money, do you? Go ahead. It's your time if you want to waste it. Oh, boy, let me buy you all of something, huh? Hold it. Let's flip for it. That's a flip for it. Boone, it's paid for. Hey, Tom. I drew Kadoka. What can you tell me about him? Well, watch when he rears out of that chute. The rest of the time, keep right after him. He'll do all right. Thanks. See, you drew Golden Rule. Looks like there goes the day money. Well, if I can ride him like old Case did at the Coliseum, I can win me some loot. Hey, Bart! Bart Eaton! How about a shot? Well, I'm in kind of a hurry, fella. Oh, I won't take just a minute. Look, you've got a lot of pictures of me down in your fire. Use one of them. Oh, they're all wire photos. Oh, well, all right, okay, but come on, make a snap. Come on, watch it, will you, Casey? Hey, look out, can't you see the guys working? <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, one without the hat on, please. Without the hat. Okay, thanks. Now, just one more, Bart. Here's an idea. How's this? Oh, that's perfect. Okay, thank you, Bart. Any time, pal. Oh, crap. Be sure you spell his name right. It's a five-letter word. <laughs> E-A-T-O-N. <laughs> Where you been, boy? Oh, shopping. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like it? Oh, it's quite an outfit. Yeah, I figured it would make it easier for him to spot me, you know, like kind of a, like a trademark. What do you plan to use at night, a neon sign? That's not a bad idea. Tom, I've been trying to tell Jerry here about pardoning me. Oh, yeah, Jerry, I want to give you a line on that for us. I wish somebody would. They got me half scared to death. One fella told me he'd go straight ahead. Another says he'll spin. All I know is I rode him four times, and he spun with me every time. That's good enough for me. Thanks a lot. OK, Jerry. Good luck. You see the program? No, not yet. You drew Skyjack and the Bareback and Mighty Might in the Saddle Bronc. Pete and Casey had them last year at Calgary. They can give you the lowdown. Yeah. And get me killed, too. What are you talking about? Those are on the level, guys. Well, maybe so, Tom, but I'll take my chances with the horses. I don't need any advance information. I draw them, I ride them. I take them as they come. Attention, please. Saddle Bronc riding the first event will start as soon as the arena clears. I'll see you later. I gotta go get my working clothes on. The trouble with him is he got too good too fast. This guy was born good. Judy! Uh, oh, I got mixed up with such a no-talent mule. I'll never understand. Tom, 
Look, Tom, you gotta wear this hat. We gotta get... Judy! Judy! Why don't nobody ever help me around here? What do you want me to do? Hold that hat. Now, listen, honey. When I, when I get on him, I hold him tight. You put the hat on. All right. Put the hat on. Oh, my goodness. Give me that hat. Get out of here, Tom. This writer's doing good. Well, he was doing good. Jerry Amber of Burbank, California. Wow. A rewrite! A rewrite! Ladies and gentlemen, should a horse fall out of the chute with a cowboy, he is entitled to a rewrite. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the former world champion cowboy and a strong contender for world championship honors this year, Tom Moody of Odessa, ready, Texas, boys? on the famous bucking horse Golden Rule. Tom Moody is really making an outstanding ride this afternoon, and he's going to be a hard man to beat in this contest. You won't see a better ride than this one for a long time to come. Man, oh Looks like the judge is going to have to give Tom the book and just let him mark his own school. <laughs> Solid horse backing, cousin. Boys, shake hands with the professor. Greatest single ride I've ever seen in my life. Well, I've you seen you me. make some great rides, Casey, but I think that one was the best. I'll have to throw in with you there. You're a pro. We're going to outlaw you. <laughs> Boy, I think I'll just turn in my uniform. Just as well I'm on these sticks. I couldn't have beat you no out. Maybe I shouldn't have asked for a rewrite. <laughs> oh, he's a good one, boys. He's really a good one. You know something, Mr. Moody? You do have a talent. You wouldn't kid me now, would you, lady? Nice ride, Tom. Oh, thank you, Brian. Good luck to you. Thanks. Good luck, Brian. Kind of puts you in a tough spot, boy. Why don't you just fall off in the chute? Mark Eaton of Rochester, New York, contestant number 224. Well, pull the trigger. You really have his hands full to qualify on this board. Just a charley horse, the soleus muscle. Yeah, I couldn't hurt more if the leg was busted. Wouldn't hurt as much. Ow! Sorry. Well, come on, tape it up, will you? I gotta loosen it up first. Well, hurry up, I gotta get back out there for the steel wrestling. I take it easy on this leg, far are you? You don't know this boy, Doc. He'd break his neck for a quarter. Oh, it isn't that, Tom Honest. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a report on Bart Eaton. He is not badly injured, painful, but not serious. Ooh! I still say that you shouldn't go out there. No, I got it, Doc. How can I let them down if they feel that way about me? Uh, what's more important, it's points. You see, for every dollar you win, you get a point in the official standings. And the one with the most points at the end of the year is champion. I don't think a rookie's ever won the championship, has he? Uh, ooh! You're a brave boy. Yeah, you're a big help. Eddie Curtis writing You and I. Next out, Jerry Amber on his re-ride horse. Come on, Jerry. Here comes Bart Eaton out of the first aid tent. This cowboy is not going to let an injury keep him out of today's competition. Isn't that true, Bart? <laughs> the meeting's got to be over. All around 11, I guess. It usually is. Well, have a good time. Aren't you coming? No. Why not? I just don't like meetings, that's all. 
A lot of us don't like meetings when we go. Well, you represent me, huh? I'm going into town to have some laughs. And give your public a chance to see you, of course. Well, anything wrong in that? Is business a secret or something? I'm a paid public performer, not an undercover man. Well, what's the matter now? I'm just looking for the other guy. The one I used to call the eager beaver. Haven't you heard, Tom? We left him in Phoenix. Yeah, I remember. In a tailor shop that sold fancy clothes. That's right. Only one thing wrong with those clothes. The pockets aren't big enough to hold the crowds. Gotta have that fixed before Calgary and Cheyenne. Is that what the meeting's all about? Wouldn't be surprised if you guys pass laws about what kind of a clothes a guy can wear. How's the leg? Ah, so so. I managed to pick up a few extra bucks and day money tomorrow. Guess it must be pretty stiff. All that tape on it. Yeah. Kind of like a cast. Well, you know how a cast is like. I suppose a guy who's knocked around as much as you have, with as many sharpshooters as you've come up against, has learned to play all the angles. Self-defense. That figures. And nobody holds that against you. But I think I ought to tell you that you're not mixed up with sharpshooters now. This rodeo business is not a racket. Hey, what are you talking about? Your clothes and your swelled head. The old timers make allowances for that. They don't mind you being a showboat and a glory rider. They don't mind you being in the spotlight. Not if you get there legitimately. But when you start faking to get in the spotlight, that they wouldn't like. So from now on, keep your nose clean. Hey, what is this? That dive you took this afternoon, faking an injury to your leg. Big, brave hero. Lots of guts. You just ain't happy unless you're the whole hog, are you? Bacon, what is this all about, Tom? This is what it's all about. Oh, that's just a bunch of old dirty socks. It's some dirty adhesive tape. One more cute stunt like this. Judy? Oh, Bart. How's the leg? Mm, okay. Doctor said to exercise a little, keep it from stiffening up. Light exercise. Like dancing? No meeting? No, oh, meetings are for the birds. Well, how about it? Got to eat sometime. Nice supper with me and then a little light exercise. Come on, get yourself out of those awful pants and into a pretty dress and let's go. <laughs> Nothing worse than pants on a dame. Okay. I'll be ready in 15 minutes. No hurry. Take 16. When a guy waits as long as I have to get a date with you, he says what he's been saving up to say. And I say, this guy's making an old woman out of you. What do you mean, old? Up here, this is where you get old, sitting around that trailer thinking. Fall in love with Tom Moody and get you up on your needlepoint. I don't do needlepoint. Well, crocheting or embroidering or whatever you do, he's off tooting around the world. You want to be having some fun. I'm having fun. Real fun, I'm talking about. Something you remember on those long, rainy nights when you're sitting in that wheelchair. This guy will give you nothing to remember. But you will. Any doubt about it? Not in your mind, there isn't. You know I will. Money to throw away. Fame, excitement. Go on places, baby. Like to have you come along? You know what I think? What? Time you got that light exercise the doctor ordered. It's like pushing a button. Here we go. Hey, honey, how about that check?
May I keep the change? Two o'clock. Time she worried you some, you sure worried her plenty. What are you talking about? Talking about the kind of worry a man gives a woman. This is the longest engagement I've seen since East Lynn. Judy and I have been all over that. She understands that. Reckon she does. Reckon that's why she went out with him. <laughs> He's a barber's cat, all right. You know what a barber's cat's full of? Fire and vinegar. Tom. Women like to squirt a little pretty water on themselves and dress up once in a while and go places, even if it's just around the corner for a soda. But you can bet all the watermelons in Parker County, he didn't take her out for no soda. Please, Can't you tell when a lady wants to say good night? Okay, beat it. Stay, Bart. I think it's time you got one thing straight. All the time you were away having fun, I was sitting around a trailer camp waiting. But now when I go out once and try and have a good time, you start acting like a jealous husband. Well, you're not a husband. And I'll go when and where and with whom I please. Good night, Bob. And thanks so very much for a wonderful evening. OK, OK, I'll sleep in town tonight. I'll pick up my stuff in the morning. I'll be waiting right outside the door. Welcome to Canada's greatest outdoor spectacle, the Calgary Stampede. For the feature event of the afternoon, the famous chuck wagon race. When the signal is given, the cooking equipment is packed and securely locked in the wagons. The outriders must stay within 75 feet of their respective wagons. The drivers and outriders make figure eights around the white barrels and head into the track. And now, as soon as the judges are ready, they will signal the start by firing a gun. Say, I hear this is always pretty good. How can it be? You ain't in it. Yeah, you'd have a better time just looking at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> this ain't very interesting. <laughs> hey, you know, boys, you guys can make it interesting. I got 300 bucks just dying for company. Anybody want to pick a wagon? I'll pick C. Okay. okay. Green one, eh? I'll take A. For 300 bucks. Bet. Bet. In case you forgot to tell you, the green one's last year's champ. <laughs> you know something, Dobie? I know a lot of last year's champs. I got a good chance of being this year's chumps. Oh, it will be long. Casey, fill her up. I guess I'll have to give you that green stuff tonight. Take your time, take your time. You can pay me in Cheyenne. The next event on your program will be the saddle bronc ride. For the winner, in addition to the purse, a beautiful silver-mounted saddle. Excuse me, boys, I'm being paid. Are you boys riding today? But you Canadians had some bucking horses up here. Think you can ride him, do you? Are you kidding? Just tell him to start writing my name in that silver saddle. Hold that stirrup. All 
right, pull the trigger. Hey! Ah! Well, I tell you, boy, there's really nothing to it. Just a lot of hard work and clean living, you know? Some's got it, some's haven't got it. Well, winning these silver saddles is all very well, but to me, they get to be just a problem. Gee, I'm accumulating them so fast, got no place to put them anymore. <laughs> well, Mr. Reed, you know, I sure owe you an apology. That was a great ride you made this afternoon. Oh, that's okay. Can't be right all the time. You just won't make the same mistake next year. No, sir, I sure won't. You know, I haven't seen anything like that since Tom Moody and Casey Tibbs first year up here. Well, I'd like to make you a little bet you won't see anything like it from now on, either. I understand you're quite a betting man, Mr. Eaton. Well, I've been known to wager a bob or two in my time, Governor. Why? Well, Mr. Crawford and myself and some of our friends, we, we kind of think we can put this saddle on something you can't ride. Is that so, Mr. Crawford? Yes, that's, uh, that's right. Well, now, uh, just how much money do you think this little experiment is worth? Oh, say, uh, four, five hundred dollars? As they say in the States, boys, put your money where your mouth is. You know, we're prepared to do just that, Mr. Eaton. Shall we go? Oh, we'll carry your saddle, Mr. Eaton. <laughs> Hey, boy, give me a check. Find him? What, standing on my head? Saddle doesn't go on him, Mr. Eaton. You guys must be crazy. Bets off. You know, as you say in the States, Mr. Eaton, we put our money where our mouths are. And we want to see you ride it. standing there minding my own business when this one big guy walks up and says, uh, I hear you American cowboys are pretty tough. I said, we're plenty tough, fellow. Now just beat it, will you? Well, then he slugs me. So I poke him and then the whole gang of them jumped me. Front, sides, and rear, they came at me swinging. Must have been 15 or 20 of them. Well, we'll take a run out there tomorrow just for the ducks of it. Yeah, maybe the seven of us got out to go see about that. Maybe wasting your time, Boone. Those guys will never fight you unless they got the odds on you, 15 to 1. That's funny. I never found those Canadian boys that way. Must have been your charming personality. Thanks a lot. What I can't understand, there's only 15 of them. He should have won. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Tom Moody licked 10 of them once, and you can lick Tom. You should have had him with you. Too bad you guys are sputing. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for the sympathy, fellas. Just put out the light as you leave, will you? <laughs> Next time, we'll bring you some flowers. Good night, lover boy. Too bad about your face. Just what I found under Bart's saddle. Why, well, I couldn't guess. Maybe a little splinter of wood. <laughs> These Calgary boys. I was the first one they pulled that gag on up here. They nearly killed <laughs> uh, okay. Hold again. Ooh.
afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your rodeo announcer, Chuck Parkinson, welcoming you to the granddaddy of them all, the Cheyenne Frontier Day celebration. This is the 55th consecutive year of rodeo in Cheyenne. As in past seasons, we have some of the finest cowboys in the rodeo world competing here today for thousands of dollars in prize money. Hi, Doby. Hi, Casey. Afternoon, Doby. There you are. Being an old champ, I thought you'd like to pin that number on me for luck. Well, Casey, think you got a chance of being second today? You know, being as how you showed up, I don't even believe I'll enter. Cheyenne, huh? Well, I guess this is the payoff. Ow! <laughs> hey, what are you trying to be funny? You ain't got room enough around here for any more comics. Hey, Judy! Pin this off for me, will you, honey? Say, do you know who I was talking to before? No. Nope. Some newspaper men from Denver. They're here to cover the show. We're going to have dinner with them tonight. That okay with you? I suppose so. They can help a lot, you know. Thanks. Well, I'll see you later, huh? You can help me spend some of my winnings. Tom! Well, how do you do? Just wanted to wish you luck. Well, thanks. You know, I was wondering if you could maybe do me a little favor. You sure, Tom. You think you might be able to persuade Junior there to take it easy? Leave a little of the day money for me? You know, just enough to eat on? Starting off our first contest event of the afternoon, Cowboys Steer Wrestling. Well, it looks like our number one steer wrestler is getting off to a bad start. Somebody gave him a bum steer. They must have got this one off the merry-go-round. Get down. 
In this event, the rider holds on with one hand, and should he touch the horse with his free hand, he'll be disqualified. He must ride for eight seconds to the satisfaction of the judges. These first few horses must have had too much buckwheat. Another big name in rodeo field with seven years of competition, Pete Crump of Billings, Montana. That's one way to get off. Making a very outstanding ride, Buck Rutherford of Nowata, Oklahoma. What do you say there, Dan? You ready for the bulls? Ready, willing, and unable. And did you ever see such bulls? Hey, Framers, they're either elephants or grease lightning. Where do you folks get stock like this? Dan's from Texas, ladies and gentlemen. He can't figure out how bulls as big as we have here can come from anywhere but Texas. Is that what you mean, Dan? That's what I mean, fella. They grow things big in Wyoming, too, Dan. <laughs> the wild flame of bull riding, the most dangerous of all rodeo events. In this contest, you will see our clown and bullfighter, Dan Breen, out there not only for the comedy, but for the protection of the cowboys as well. Keep one eye on the Bramer, keep one eye on the cowboy, and keep one eye on the ground. There's our clown, Dan Bream, right on the job. picture in the paper. Dan Bream is really getting the workout today. Once again, Barty, this time trying his luck on a frame of bull. Ready, Bart? And I might add... Don't interrupt the man. Let him finish what he's saying. Two more events, he could very well be on his way to all-around cowboy. I'm ready. All right, pull the trigger. Cutting in on Dan Bream's clown. Let that bull alone! Get out of there! Hey! Oh. I could have handled that bull. Yeah, you could have taken another bow, too. Now listen, Tom. You listen for once. If you ever open your kisser to me again, I'm going to bust your pretty teeth right down your throat. We sincerely hope that our clown, Dan Breen, is not seriously injured. And we'll give you a report as to his condition as soon as it is flashed to us from the receiving hospital. Why'd you send for me? Now, you didn't have to come. Now, did you? Come over a little closer. It kind of hurts when I talk too loud. Hmm. 
You know, bar this little accident we had today ain't gonna set real well with the boys, and it might cause you some trouble if you don't start changing your ways. Meaning what? Meaning that you're the honorest, reddest, most ungrateful excuse for a man I've ever laid my eyes. This may surprise you, but long after you're gone, there'll still be rodeos. Once or twice before, I've seen swell heads who thought they were the whole show, and without them, there wouldn't be any show. The curious thing, there always is, and there always will be. If you can convince yourself that this is true, it might help straighten you out. And you need straightening out, cousin. You know why? Because you're worth straightening out. Yes, sir, you are. The thing that's wrong with you is one of the things that's wrong with the world. The whole world's afraid of being corny. They're afraid to say thank you or be nice to the other fella or listen to his trouble. They're afraid you can't take no interest in nobody without being weak. Being polite and gratefully, no sign of weakness. Pushing people around don't make a guy strong, and it's time you learned that. You know, for a guy that thinks he's a pretty smart article, you're also dumb. What do you think people think of a guy that dresses fancy and beats a drum and blows a horn? I'll tell you what they think. They think he's a joker. He has to be a joker, because no good man, no really good man has to do that. Take Tom and Tibbs and Crump, Williams, Boone and Doobie Carson. They don't do it. So all you're doing is making people think you're a faker and a phony. But you ain't. You're good. I ain't never seen nobody any better in their first year. And you might even be one of the best that ever lived. But not the way you're going. Take them cowboys, for instance. They want to like you. But you got to give them a chance. What am I supposed to do, Dan? Stop being a heel. I didn't set out to be a heel, Dan. It just happened. I got started on the wrong road and just kept going. You could stop now if you wanted to. How? Tell him. Lay it on the line to him. Tell him you've been a heel and you're sorry and you'd like to start all over. How, how do you say that, Dan? Walk up to Tom and I say, Tom, I want to talk to you. You know how I say it. The boys will be mighty pleased. Thanks, Dan. Thanks very much. See you later, cousin. Thanks for dropping in to see me. Thanks. Well, there you are. Let him alone. How's Dan? You know, I ain't seen him like that in four years. How do you know it was four years? Are you kidding? Mom, I want to talk. All right, Tom. <laughs> Reckon we ought to wake him up for the second round? I think the champ needs a short beer. <laughs> One brew coming up. <laughs> Okay, so you can punch. You'll be able to do something better than I can. I do everything better than you can, except shoot off my mouth. All right, starting them out, I'll put a little side bet on every event. What's the matter with right now? 
How much dough you got? What? How much dough you got? Over a grand. Why? Here's eleven hundred. Cover it. For what? Now, with your talent, don't have to ask questions. Just cover it. You're covered. Okay. Let's go. Pick one. What? Pick one. We'll take them out there and ride them together. No rules, no regulations, just ride them. The last one off picks up the dough. Joe, have you seen Tom Moody? Have I seen Tom Moody? Him and that Eaton fella just wrecked my joint. But where? My guess is they're headed for the rodeo grounds. What's going on? I wish I knew. Hey, you're kidding about letting both these bulls out at the same time, aren't you? Just tell me when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, Dobby, give him the dough. Hey, Tom, wait. Say, how does a guy say something to you without getting his head knocked off? Like what? Like what I was trying to tell you in the bar. I've been a heel and I'm sorry, and I'd like to prove it to you. Thanks, Tom. I'm sorry, Judy. It was an accident, Bart. Uh, what do I do with the money? Tell your friend to take it easy from now on. Leave some of that prize money for the rest of us. He's going to take it easy. He's getting married. Yeah. And I'm going to spend my honeymoon in Paris. You're wrong. You're going to spend your honeymoon in Cheyenne. That's what I said. Cheyenne. What do I do with the money? Come on, fellas. I'll buy you a drink. Hey, Dobie! That's my dough! 